I have to say I absolutely love roach fishing. You can't really beat the view when you are fishing on the river and you're throttling your float and then it goes under and you strike and the roach produces those bang bang bang. It's just really very very nice feeling. So in this video you will see a couple parts. First of all I will describe a little bit the problems stick float fishing has. Then I will demonstrate how to overcome those issues and how to tie stick float rig with a couple variations. And also I will explain uh, two probably my favorite shooting patterns for stick floats. Also I will touch a little bit on uh, types of stick, of stick floats, especially the uh, stems. So whether they will be metal ones or plastic ones. And after that I will explain how to store those stick float rigs. And lastly I will go out and will show you how to catch a few roach on the trend using stick float. But now I will take a sip of this stuff and play the intro for you. So stick float can be very very effective way of catching river fish especially such fish like roach and dace chub sometimes. But also stick float is not very convenient because quite often it requires small shot and quite few of them to be put on the line. And when you are on the bank you don't really want to be messing about with like number 8 or number 10 size shots and put like 20 of them on the rig. Really when you are by the river uh, you really want to do one thing and that's go fishing. At least uh, that's uh, how I feel all the time. I don't want to be messing about when, I, when I'm going fishing. When I go fishing, when I'm by the river, uh, I want to start fishing as quickly as I can. So whether I'm float fishing, I want to start throat my float. If I'm feeder fishing, I want to chuck out my feeder as quickly as I can. So how to overcome this issue? Obviously you want to prepare your rigs in advance and uh, you want to store them as well. Basically what I use to store rigs, uh, store uh, stick float rigs is a Preston Innovations box which is this uh, or was designed to store pole rigs. Obviously the stick floats most of the time they are quite short, most of the time they are delicate floats up to 20 centimeters. And that's uh, really, and those uh, floats and rigs are, are uh, to be fit perfectly into that Preston box. I will grab that box I, I have just here and will show you in a second. So yeah, that's a bad boy. Basically it's about 20 centimeters in that direction and probably 25 in that direction. As I said, it was designed to store pole rigs, but I'm using it to store my stick float rigs. I have quite a few stick floats, uh, not on the rigs, but also I have quite a few, which I tied earlier as well. And that, in my opinion, is brilliant. You just, when you go fishing, you take one of these, put it onto your rod, and you are away. And if you would tangle or break the rig, you can take another one. If you have a duplicate and you put on, you put it on and you are away as well, you don't need to mess about by putting, I don't know, 20 small shots on the line, especially if it's cold, bad weather, raining, what have you. So, and uh, now I think it's a very, very good time for me to show how to tie this rig so it would be convenient to store on these winders and also I will demonstrate how to attach such a rig which is stored on uh, the winder to the main line. 
let's do it now. Before demonstrating how to tie a stick float rig, let me quickly explain about the stick floats themselves. So those floats are most of the time quite short floats. I would say most of the time uh, they are up to 20 centimeters long. They might have different antennas and they can be colored in different colors as well. And they can be more buoyant ones like this one or very slim ones. And that will affect how you will be able to present your rig. But that's not as important in my opinion as is important the stem of the float. Most of the time at this point there are two main materials which are used for stick float stems. It's a quite fine aluminum wire which is quite light and these aluminum wire floats or stick floats are quite light. And then there are ones which are made uh, out of quite heavy plastic or lignum wood. And these ones, they have quite thick stem and those floats are much heavier. I can feel that this float is much heavier than this one. And these floats obviously do cast much better than this, these ones. And also these ones, I would say they do work better in deeper water when the flow is lower. And these ones which have fine aluminum wire, they do work better in shallower and faster waters because most of the weight of the rig is on the line or uh, in, the, in the form of lead shot. And in this case, most of the weight will be, well, it will depend on the size of the float, of, of course, but most of the weight in the rig will be in the float itself. So it will cast very well. And now let's quickly tie a stick float rig. For this demonstration, I will use this float. Before going any further, let me quickly explain what components to use for stick float rigs. In my opinion, the best line you can get for stick flow trig is Drennan double strength one. It's really perfect line. It's durable. It floats or it has the neutral buoyancy and, and it just uh, is very, very strong and reliable line. So, and the diameter should be about 0 0.14. I think 0 0.14, 0 0.15. That's the best line because you don't go any thinner than that because obviously you will be putting some shots on it so you want uh, you want that your line would uh, attain all the strengths and the shots wouldn't damage it uh, as easy and as for the shots themselves i would say you want to use number eight see so yeah, in my opinion the best shots for delicate stick flow tricks and which ones to use in my opinion the best ones you can buy Today are Balabeni ones, those Italian ones. So they are very nicely cut, they are just uniform and they sit on the line just beautifully. They have, they do have just enough uh, grip on the line, but they do not damage the line, so that's ideal. Of course, if I would use this thin line and these little shots, you wouldn't be able to see everything very well. So for this demonstration, I will use quite big shots. I think I will use BB shots and I will use some thick monofilament just, just for demonstration purposes. So you would be able to see what I'm doing. So those are real components which you should use, but I won't use them for demonstration. So you would be able to see, I will use dark and thick monofilament and big shots as well. So let's get into it. Everything is more or less very simple. I will grab quite a few of these shots. Let's see, five. Then, obviously you will need very good quality rubber sleeves. I would say Drennan ones or Dave Harrell ones are by, by far the best and the, they just do work very well for stick floats because they were designed for that and they are in my opinion the best 
you don't need to look anywhere else really okay so i will take that thick monofilament line and we'll put them sleeves Obviously you want to start with the biggest one which will go on to antenna, then the medium one which will go on to the stem and the smallest one which will be on the end of the stem. We have the first one. Now the second one. And the last one. I would say you want to use the last one a little bit longer, like centimeter, centimeter and a half, something like that, because longer sleeve on then will help with anti-tangle properties and you need that middle one just in case if this one would break when striking etc so you would be able to just take it off and not take it off but slide it off the line both of them and then place this one on the end as well so you would be able to use your rig a little bit longer even though your sleeve the top one would be gone. Also it's very important to mention as we have the float now on the line when you want to move your line when making your rig you want to wet a little bit so the line wouldn't cut into the float and wouldn't da damage the float and wouldn't damage itself as well. All right let's put that float aside now a little bit. In my opinion there are two main shooting patterns for thick floats. And basically when using small shots, as I mentioned, like number eight shots, you can adjust your rig so it would have or would behave in each way. So I will put all of these five shots now on the line. But in your situation, you will have to put as many number eights as required by the float, of course. And if you have like a calibration tube at home, you should use that to calibrate your stick float perfectly. Right, I have five shots on my line. So basically, as I said, at least I use only two shooting patterns for my stick float fishing. The first one is the basic one. Basically, I have a group of shots no matter how many of them, it can be 5, 6, 7, 10, 15, the amount required, required by the float. So I have them in one group and then I have about 30 to 40 centimeters from that group. I have a dropper shot. And then from the dropper shot, again about 30 centimeters, of course, it will depend on my hook link length, but most of the time I use short hook links like 15, 20 centimeters. So from that shot to the loop, I will have more about 30 centimeters, let's say. And on the end, I will have a small loop to attach my hook link onto it. I will use a ringer's loop tire to form this little loop. So it would be nice and reliable. We'll trim off the tag end. We'll leave and we'll leave very very short end by the knot. And yeah, that's my basic stick float rig. Just one group of shots, and then as I said, about 30, 40 centimeters one dropper, and then about 30 centimeters to the loop. Of course, 
I quite like to have little gaps like a one millimeter gaps in between the shots in my main group. I think that helps just with anti-tangle properties and also it helps just I think when the fish takes it it just feels the weight gradually and not in one clump. So that's the most basic rig you can get. But also as we have so many small shots on the line we can alter this rig in a way we want it on the day. So we can have if we want we can have the main group and then we have one shot and then another shot if we need to and then we can go even further and have one shot here, second shot here, third shot here and uh, now we are getting on to the second main pattern of stick float rig so and it's called shirt button style basically you have about 15 centimeters gaps in between the shots across the rig so but of course if you need to you can use in one little group like two number eight shots then in another group two number eight shots and so on but the gaps should be as i said about 15 centimeters in between the shots or uh, single shots or shot groups and that makes a classic shirt button style shirting pattern this rig obviously works quite nicely through the water because all the shot just sink nicely and the fish when take the hook bait it doesn't feel all group immediately or all the weight immediately so yeah and as i said having many shots on the line your rig is quite versatile like and, and you can do a lot of visit so as we have the rig how to transport this rig right basically what i do i will take about a couple meters of that line now where my rig is tied onto and that's the end of my rig line so i will tie a small loop now on that i will use ringer's loop tire for that as well very very simple it's the same principle as you would do with your polar rig more or less let's remove the tag end right and now i will take a winder in this case it's a preston innovations one it's 18 centimeters long and i will put more my rig onto this winder very simple idea here and then i can put my prepared rig into little winders box as you saw with my other stick float rigs and that's really perfect I, as you can see I do have quite a few stick float rigs in here already so and once I am by the water sedge I will take out my rig the one which I want to use on the day given the conditions and then I will attach it onto my main line and how to attach onto my main line you will ask it's very very simple idea so I will grab the same dark and stick monofilament line We'll put that rig aside a little bit. So let's assume that this line is my main line, which comes from my reel. And on that line, on the end, I will tie a decent size loop. We'll use figure of eight knot here. We'll trim off the tag end just like that and now it's very very simple i will grab my rig again and will attach this rig to my main line just using loop to loop more or less this loop is not very nice i will redo it quickly so it would look nicer a little bit
So as you can see, we have a small loop on our rig and we have a big loop onto our main line. And then I will take that loop, that big loop and like squeeze it with my fingers. And then I will put that smaller loop over that big loop and then I'll slide it a little bit towards the towards the reel if you like and then I will drop all my rig through that big loop and now we will end up having these two connected loop to loop as you can see simple and our rig is attached to our main line and then let's say if you would be fishing somewhere deeper right where you need more lines than your rig has so basically all you do then if those rubber tubes are good quality you should be able of course you need to wet them but you should be able to pull the knots through the through those silicone tubes and adjust the depth to what you need really. Just remember that for this demonstration I'm using very very thick line, it's about 0.30 millimeters diameter. If you you will be using for sure you will be using thinner lines for your stick float rigs and for your stick uh, stick float main line as well. And to work with these thin lines it will be much easier you won't even have to remove any of the sleeves i had to remove the, the smallest one because it was too tight i didn't want to risk to break it but that's it as you can see the connection is just here and our float is here and all our shooting pattern still is on the main line just here and it's actually still on the winder so Maybe it doesn't look very nice, but we have everything now. That's our main line. That's the float on the main line. That's the connection. That's the main line. And that's the rig line. Very simple and easy way to transport stick float rigs. And now I will try to explain what I'm doing to catch them roach. So. First of all, I will grab probably 15 grains of tears out of my pouch and then we'll put one of them onto my hook. Then I will swing out my rig into the flow. Just like that. And then I will feed the rest of the tears on the same line more or less where my rig is. And now I will wait for the take. didn't happen this time so I will repeat the steps and I'm pretty sure I will get one just now And I am in. Not the biggest roach in the world, but very, very beautiful fish. So to sum up what you just saw, the 
couple key f things really are to mention. So, first of all, you have to present your leg, uh, rig or just cast it always downstream. You have to remember that the more downstream you will get with your float rig, the more control you will have, and that's ideal. Then, you have to remember to feed little and often. It's always the key that you want to feed like 10 grains or something like, not necessarily grains, it can be maggots, casters, whatever, really sweet corn. It just keeps that bait going in, not a lot, as I said, just little by little and see how it goes. Right, let's talk about tackle for a bit. Let's start with the rod. I'm using Daiwa Bolo Match uh, at six meters. Uh, I quite like to use a longer rod just when river fishing uh, on the float. I think it uh, allows me to, con to control the lighter float much better. Then I have a uh, Daiwa Fu Fuego Reel uh, at uh, two 1500 size so nice uh, and reliable reel then on the reel I have very very fine braid uh, in Japanese marking it would be uh, PE 0.3 so it would make about uh, 0 0.9 millimeters diameter I think it's very very important uh, at least for me to use fine braid because uh, as a mainline because it has all the right properties for stick float fishing on the river. Uh, I will explain a little bit more about the braided lines, uh, why you should use or consider using braided line as a mainline when river fishing on the stick float. Then I have a, my rig, I will try to show it quickly. Right, so here is my braided line and there is a very big loop and I connected my rig, which is made out of uh, 0 0.14 monofilament line and I joined those two using loop-to-loop -loop connection. Since the float is Dave Harrell, uh, alloy stem ones, uh, size says uh, eight, by four. I have no idea what the hell does this mean. Pro uh, probably like judging by the size of it I think it will be like two grams or something like that 1.5 to two grams. Then I have like a group of shots. Those are number eight and I have probably about 10 of them, 11 actually. Then about 20 centimeters from that main group, I have another uh, size eight. And uh, then probably another 40 centimeters or so from that shot, I have my loop. And then to that loop, I attached short hook link, 15 centimeters hook link. And that hook link is attached uh, again loop to loop and uh, the hook link is uh, made out of 0.10 Drennan suplex fluorocarbon. And the hook itself is a Guru F1 pellet hook at size 16, yeah. Uh, I quite like these hooks, they are barbless, they are just perfect for everything for me. I really, really like them. So yeah, that's... Uh, a rod assembly more or less let's put it aside for a bit and now uh, about the bait uh, I'm using like for a feeder and my hook bait just uh, some tears pretty much uh, I wanted to go roach fishing and I checked my freezer and uh, there weren't uh, any other baits apart from tears and it's doing the job so far then at the start I put probably 
I don't know, a couple hundred grams of uh, ground beer just to get uh, roach in the area more or less. So I mixed it up and I put quite a few uh, of them uh, grains of tears and, and I did make not very big, probably that size bowls and chucked them uh, in the river in the, on the line where I was hoping to fish. And uh, I think the ground bait worked quite well because uh, when I started fishing, I started getting bites like instantly. But again, that was just for the start to get things going quickly. Still, uh, I'm feeling like not a lot, but a little bit of, I don't know, 10, 15 grains every, every couple minutes, not every couple minutes, like every 30 seconds to a minute, that amount of grains into the swim and it's working and that little pouch is just in my opinion that's a very very good piece of tackle when fishing like especially for roach when you are into uh, in the river you don't need anything else as you can see i have only my uh, keep net and uh, everything i need is here my spare hook links my leads well shots my scissors and that's it and, and I have my discorger just uh, in the uh, in the uh, in the keep net. It's a floating one, the, the ringers one. So everything simple. I don't even need the like the spoon to to land the fish. I just grab them if 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 uh, I would hook a bigger roach. And I have to say that this ground bait, in my opinion, that's probably one of the best ground baits for roach ever produced. I think uh, every single roach and especially big one just just loves this stuff. Yeah, that's I think more or less everything covered when it comes to tackle and uh, baiting. And now let's go back fishing. Let's have a look what we caught. That's my discorger. We'll chuck it somewhere. Hopefully we'll be able to find it later. I'm pretty sure that it will be a good five kilos of roach. Yeah, easy, easy five kilos, maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah, I would say maybe seven or eight kilos even. Wow, that's not bad and probably, I don't know. About five hours of fishing or so, I would say, including filming. Yeah, we'll tip all, all those beauties back now. So, I explained a little bit about stick floats. I did demonstrate how to tie a stick float rig and how to store it. We did some fishing. And that's, I think, more or less it for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.